So here we are. You are attending Consult to Close with Susan Hyatt. And I'm a master certified life coach. I'm an author of two books. Um, one of them is called Bear. It's about how to love the skin you're in. I've also created a bunch of other stuff, including business programs that you're going to hear about later today called one of my masterminds is called On the Six. I help women make a lot of money. I'm also a wife and a mom, and I'm obsessed with a lot of things. We really need to update my bio slide. I'm obsessed with Peloton, running, um, Lizzo. What are y'all obsessed with? I want to hear. This is my family. So uh, I have been married 27 years to the Silver Fox, who is driving the RV on this Go Time TV road trip edition. Um, these are my pets, Jake, Juliet, and Moses. And my black cat, Apollo, is still missing. Y'all need to like send good juju that Apollo comes home. These are my beautiful children. Uh, Ryan Hyatt, who is 21 and now a senior in college. He also is a newly licensed residential real estate agent. And he's going to be um, for the 100th Rich Coach Club podcast episode. He is going to be my guest. And for those of you who've been around my community for a while, um, and for those of you who know me in real life, know that uh, the, the uh, journey of raising Ryan Hyatt is not over, but we've come a long way. So we're going to talk about that and talk about him being a new entrepreneur on the 100th episode of Rich Coach Club. So stay tuned for that. And that is the lovely Cora Hyatt, who is now, she's a sophomore at University of Portland, but she's actually technically six credits away from being a senior. I can't even believe this kid. So anyway, that's my fam bam. Here's some uh, evidence of stuff that I've done that's been pretty cool. Last year, I gave a TEDx talk. I was in O Magazine. Um, I mentioned publishing the Bear book and there's some press that I got for that I was super proud of. But we're here today in a distraction-free zone. So I am begging you, turn all your shit off so that you can pay attention and learn how to close these console calls, okay? <laughs> so the first order of business is why even do console calls? Why do you guys think? Why would we even bother with doing a console call? Oh, Colleen says the RV tour is her husband's biggest dream. <laughs> I'm only doing it because I can't get on a plane. <laughs> but it's going to be fun. Pre-screening clients. Hi, Mimi. Mm. So Grace says, I stopped doing them for free when I had too many no-shows. Now I charge for them. To see if you're a good fit. Yep. Hi, Jen. Hi, Laurie. Uncovering pain points. Yep. Pre-screening. Yep. 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 Yeah. So, so the whole reason of doing these, I, I think I'm going to go through some of them. Um, I used to, I used to be like, I'm not getting on the phone with people. So a consult call, I just want to be clear, is a sales call. This is not a coaching call. This is not what you call, what, coaches typically refer to as a discovery call. All right. This is, this is a call set up where you are talking about why they should purchase your program and see if it's a good fit. So, oops, see, that's the horrifying <laughs> screen. <laughs> oh, I cracked myself up. Okay. Um, I just want to put this out there. So Cara Lowenthal, uh, who was in my mastermind in 2016, the script that you're going to get, she was like, you should charge people $100,000 just to read this. So she no longer, I don't think she does consult calls anymore. This is back when she did. Um, but here's the deal. So it's research, right? So having consult calls with, it helps you get to know your ideal client because you hear in their words somebody mentioned pain points, you hear in their words what they're struggling with. 
And the whole point of the call is really to talk about the solution that you have to the, the spot that they're in. And so this is great research. Um, it's also, somebody mentioned this, to explore and see if it's a good fit. So this isn't about, please, please, please hire me. That is not the kind of energy to bring to a consult call. The consult call is like, let me, let me get up in here, see what's happening with this person, see if we're a good fit, talk about the amazing results that I'm capable of helping facilitate. Um, but this, isn't, this, is a, this is leadership energy, and this is um, being of service, but this is not, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, right? That kind of energy repels sales. So you're going to you explore and see if it's a good fit. And it's also sharing. It's like, you know, here are the details about the solution that I have to this problem. Um, I want to see what's coming up for that. Um, so Susan says, should I be able to see other attendees? Uh, no, you should not be able to see other attendees, but you can chat with other attendees. So in the chat box, I want to make sure everybody sets their chat box to all panelists and attendees so that when you talk, um, everybody can see what you're saying. Hi, Becky Hart. Um, you're welcome. Right. Please change it because everybody wants to see what you have to say. So yeah, so this is about research. This is like, is this my ideal client? exploring what's happening, sharing how amazing that your program is, um, letting them know this amazing solution that you have to their problem. And this is not uh, a venting call. This is not a coaching call. This is not um, a call where you just show up and say, so what's happening? Um, this isn't a chit chat. Okay, this should be a short call where you are finding out what's happening with them, what they've tried before, what's not working, and articulating what it is that you have to offer. Um, hello, hello, hello. Okay. <clears throat> so Jennifer says, this is my problem. I always fall into a chit chat scenario. Um, Debbie says, would you take notes during that call? Yes, I definitely take notes because I'm going to encourage you to follow up with them because as we like to say, fortune is in the follow-up. Um, and you want to remember, you know, what was going on with them, um, details about, you know, maybe what some of their objections were so that you can, when you follow up with them, you can mention that, but I definitely do. Um, is it better to do this via phone or Zoom? Hi, Ellen. So I don't, I don't necessarily have a preference. It's more of a personal preference. Um, so there's a lot of body language you can pick up on via Zoom, but there are a lot of people that, that may feel a little shy to, to hop on Zoom. So that's what I would definitely encourage you to, to think about your ideal client, what's their lifestyle like? Um, is it easy for them to hop on Zoom? Is it easier for them to get on the phone or hop on Zoom? So um, we do both. Anna, who's my COO and strategist, she only does them via Zoom. And interesting, I'm not sure if Patty does Zoom or phone. I used to only do phone. And personal preference for me, because I don't know what your, everybody on this Zoom webinar, I don't know what your work days are like, but you know, I might be like, you know, letting pets in and out and doing all those kinds of things. And I'm also on Zoom so much that I need to give my eyes a rest. So I, I prefer phone. Um, Nicole says, I feel like a professional networker. I get in my own way when it comes to the ask. Okay. Um, so Nicole, I would love if you, do you know what you tell yourself that leads to you feeling nervous or shy about making the ask? Hi, Simone. Simone says you can always do Zoom and give the option to turn off the video. Correct. That's actually a great thing to, to uh, offer. Do you do all your consults on a certain day or do you schedule any day of the week? So 
Um, I have not done them in a long time. And when I did do them, I did them any day of the week. Um, but I know that Anna and Patty have, when they send out the link to book consult calls, they do them on certain days and times, you know, so they have time blocked out for that. Um, so I'm trying to think if I were to do it today, I probably would reserve time each day if somebody wanted to hop on a call with me and talk about, like right now we're selling um, the On The Six Mastermind. And so I have a feeling um, Patty Licious has time available on most days, but if it's, um, say, it's not a launch period time, you could definitely, especially if you're working another job or something like that, you could, you could do it on a certain day and time. Um, hi, Sandy. Sandy says, I was a former client and remember our consult call. Awesome. Yeah, I actually loved doing them. I love consult calls. Is, does anybody else love consult calls? And who loathes them? Like, are you nervous? Like, what's the primary feeling state that comes up when you think about doing consult calls? Grace says, oh, why? Angie loves them. I hate them all. Ariel! Paralysis. Okay. Anna says, we do limit how many days that tile on the calendar that's available. Okay. Jessica Miller. Hi, Jessica Miller. I love consult calls. I think you learn so much. Yeah. Nicole says, what gets in my way? I don't know that I have packages, offerings properly, properly outlined to articulate what I'm selling. My target audience is CFO CEOs. And also I think I'm afraid of the no. So I avoid it to before even asking. Okay. All very common. How many of you identify with that? Now, the first thing I have to say is you definitely want to make sure that you're clear on what you're selling, right? So you want to have, this is something we work with our clients on all the time. You want to have a signature offer. And a signature offer could be your one-on-one -on -one coaching package, or it could be a digital program, or it could be like, it doesn't matter the delivery of the signature program, but it does matter that you have something that's clear that you're selling. So of course, if you don't know, right, you're gonna be nervous getting on a call if you don't have something specific that you're selling. So I definitely think we would, Nicole, we would definitely, um, work with you on that. And then the other thing is, you guys, you're going to get no's. You are going to get a ton of no's. Let me give you an example. So when I was on my book tour for Bear, I hired a PR person who specialized in podcast bookings. So her job was to pitch me to be a guest on other people's podcasts and talk about Bear. And um, you know, I had, I had a great bio, I had great topics outlined, I had a professional person pitching me, and, you know, we were, we basically had a 25 to 30% yes rate. So that means 75% of the time, people were saying no to us. That's all right, right? You're gonna have people that you get on these consult calls with and there's a certain amount of people that um, just want to get on the phone, and that's okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't particularly love it when people book consult calls with my team just to get on the phone, but it does happen, right? So there's going to be a certain amount of people that just aren't serious. There are some things you can do in advance to check out their readiness. So we do have people fill out an application. It's a very simple application to book a consult call, which you'll learn about at the end of today's um, broadcast, because I'm gonna encourage you to set up a consult call with Patty and talk about on the six. Um, but it's a very simple form, but we do make sure that they understand the investment level before getting on the consult call. Now, I know that there are marketing experts that will disagree. You will 
you will hear from other sales experts that your goal is to get them on the phone and, and um, convince them that it's worth it. I disagree. I think I personally, as a consumer, want to know how much something is before I get on the phone. Now, um, other sales experts will say, no, 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 because they may never they, you know, they may not have considered it or discounted, blah, blah, blah. Anna and I actually, Anna was like, I think we should try it without putting the price on, blah, blah, blah. So then Anna does a string of consult calls for my audience who didn't, they came in off of Facebook ads, they didn't know the investment. She's like, all right, <laughs> all right, I just had my millionth call with somebody who didn't understand the investment level and there's no way, shape or form that they could afford or choose to afford what you're selling. And so I just think, yes, you're gonna get fewer consults booked, but you're gonna get more qualified consults booked. So we actually have people answer a question on the application that it, they can say, yes, I understand the investment and I'm all in, or they can say, yes, I understand the investment, but I do have, I'm strongly considering it, but I do have questions, or they can say, no, I cannot afford this commitment. People who answer, yes, I'm all in, or yes, I'm aware of the price, but I still have questions, they get, they move on to actually getting booked. I just think um, it's just much more um, upfront to, to basically talk to people about what the investment is before they get on the phone so that they're not surprised. So yeah, it's pre-qualifying people. We ask other questions too. You know, we ask like, do you have a business? What's going on with your business and all those things. But I just think it's important that you have something in place where they understand that they get on the phone with you and then you have an opportunity to share with them. Um, yeah, well, it is true. Like it, it depends on what you're selling and how you know, how much the person wants the, how much they want the solution to their problem. And so if, if the client is ready, you know, they're, they are, you know, so for our masterminds, you know, the ideal client for this is somebody who has been building their business. They know that there's some stuff they're missing. They know that there are better ways to do what they're doing they need help with marketing and communication and all those things and they're willing and ready to invest if, to have a community of support to do that so if it's somebody who you know they're just not in a place where they want to be in a community like that the the best sales call in the world isn't going to cause an investment to happen if they're not really in need of help and support so there's all that um Misty says, I had a client that threw out a price and I stayed quiet and then he upped it by 5K, the power of silence. <laughs> oh, right. So Mallory says, we're transitioning to a second email to those who can't afford it and break down the pricing in case somebody has sticker shock and need to see what the cost per month breakdown would be. Yay, team. I love when my team is so smart and does stuff like that, right? So. So, so, so. All right. Um, wait, I was going to share screen, but I want to make sure I didn't miss any questions because you guys are lighting up this chat and I love it. Right. All right. Yes, I have them complete the application um, before they have the consult. This, that's the system that we have in place. And we're gonna talk about now ways to get consult calls booked. So, and there are, there are a bunch of different ways you can do this, right? So depending on what you use as your marketing vehicles, like whether it's social media or email marketing or a combination of all of those things, um, I was like, my assistant's texting me and I thought it was about the webinar. It's about the RV, y'all. <laughs> Hi, Bianca. Wait a minute. Okay, see if this is a good fit. Share how to get more calls booked. Okay, how many of y'all use social media? 
as part of the way that you communicate with your potential audience. I bet most of you. All right. And so what social media platforms are you using? Um, we use Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. We also um, now use YouTube. We're brand new to YouTube with GoTime TV. Um, hi, Liza. Facebook, Instagram are pretty common. LinkedIn. Yeah. Alexandra Franzen is teaching you about social media. Alex! So Alexandra Franzen is uh, how to get away from it. She is the head copywriter for Susan Hyatt, the agency. And she is one of the only people I know who doesn't use social media. And I admire her for it. But I happen to be one of those weirdos that love social media. So Tanya says occasionally Twitter. Um, okay. We're also new to Medium. We're, we're, we're doing some new stuff. We're primarily Facebook and Instagram and now YouTube. By the way, we are 10, Mallory alerted me, we are 10 views away from a thousand unique viewers on GoTime TV episode one. So if y'all want to help a sister out, y'all could go watch after today's broadcast, go watch GoTime TV episode one. So we hit that milestone. We're, we're newbies. Thank you, Misty. All right, so social media. All right. Email invites, right? So on social media, when I say social media, here's what I mean is that you have to let people know that they can hop on the phone with you and get their questions answered. And so posting about it on social media is important. Um, so right now, for example, Mallory on my team, who's my right hand during today's webinar, she's going into Rich Coach Club, which is my private Facebook and saying like, hey, don't you want to hop on the phone with Patty and get your questions answered about on the six? And we're not shy about it, right? I think part of this, a big part of this for many of you is about mindset. So when you said like, oh, I feel icky and gross and all these things. So some of it is preparation and understanding what you're selling. Some of it is um, pep talking yourself. So coming up with high quality thoughts instead of low quality thoughts about what the purpose of this call is. And you're not always gonna get a yes. You shouldn't always get a yes. I know we want everything that we do to always be a yes and like just have a money ATM rolling all the time, right? But um, I, I think that in this online space, we have become so entitled and we are not entitled. We are not entitled to other people's money or success. We have to um, demonstrate value and be of service. And that means taking the time to get on the phone with somebody and communicating effectively, hey, like you want to make more money? I have tips, tricks, coaching tools, and support to help you do that. And being unapologetic about what it is that you have to offer and getting access to what's happening in their brains about what they think the obstacles are. So you want to, as part of your marketing plan, I would say 25% of the time, you need to be letting people know, here's how you book a consult call with me to see if this is a good fit. Using your social media to do that, using email to do that, using paid ads to do that. So um, I would love to hear how many of y'all have used paid ads to get leads. So whether it's Facebook ads, Instagram ads. Um, Nicole says, I'm so used to perfection and getting it right in my prior career that no's can feel like a failure. I, I think lots of, I mean, listen, none of us like to hear no, but no could be success, right? Like <clears throat> I can't tell you how many times I've said like, this isn't a good fit. 
Um, and if they were able to just like book and then end up in my world without a consult to see if they're a good fit, hello. Um, Mira says, I hired a Facebook ad expert last week. Was it on Amica from Susan High at the agency? Because Mira, <laughs> no paid ads yet. Valerie says, I don't know what I'm doing with Facebook ads. Um, I've used both, but playing around with audiences. I did when I had no idea. Okay. It did work. Okay, cool. Hi, Joy. Not yet. All right. Hi, Stacy. Anna is the best. You wanted to hire a woman and didn't know one. Listen. Hi, Cher. Is it Emily Cher? Um, not using social media. My clients like the exclusivity. Mm. Face to face. How is that happening in the time of COVID? Zoom? Um, now you know, right? Liza says, I've used Facebook ads, but they've not converted to sales. They've sent people to my website and then I lost them. I think that's part of the Liza, when I first started doing Facebook ads with just my VA, um, I didn't know what I was doing. I remember my first Facebook ad was like a, a beautiful photo of a cappuccino. <laughs> and if any of you are doing that, stop immediately. But I was like, oh, why aren't people, like people were clicking through and then it linked to my website. You do lose them. So you need somebody that knows what they're doing that can help you understand the kind of imagery and language that needs to be on the Facebook ad and then take them to a landing page, not your website. Um, but that's a whole other training. Um, Tanya says Facebook ads haven't resulted. Okay, yeah, that's what you're missing. Okay, cool. All right, so here's the thing is that you do not have to run ads to get people booked for consult calls. You can do, in fact, when I was saying to Anna, like what are the top three things that you would say to people um, about how to get consult calls booked? And she was like, directly ask, right? So that could be, I do this all the time. I have people that respond to an Instagram story or they'll respond to, something happening on my Facebook feed. And I'll just say to them, they'll have a question and I'll say, would you like to have a complimentary consult call with Patty on my team to see if this is a good fit for you? And they're like, well, yeah, I would, right? And sometimes it turns out to be a good fit and sometimes it doesn't, right? Or they'll inquire about like Mallory on my team somebody emailed in to the support email a bunch of questions about things when we were selling the summer of yes. And Mallory was like, I think we should offer her a consult call with Patty because I think this person is actually probably a better fit for on the six, right? So it's, it's being, being conscientious and respectful of what it is they actually need. And if they're asking questions, that lead you to believe that your program or service could benefit them, then directly say, would you like to hop on the phone and see if my program's a good fit for you? I can send you some info via email, um, you know, and if you want to have them fill out an application, do that. But I think that there, I think sometimes we get up in our heads too much about like, Oh, I couldn't possibly do that, or that's too much of a bother, or they're going to say no, or whatever. And listen, <clears throat> one of the best pieces of sales advice that I have for everybody is something that I call, you probably heard me talk about it, shoe sale energy. Um, I could now call it Peloton energy, but as the story goes, um, I, once upon a time, I was shopping at a local boutique that carried fried boots. And this was probably 2014. I was in a real cowboy boot phase. <laughs> now I'm in a dynasty phase, okay? There's, there's been a shift. But um, I was all about fry boots at the time and they were having like a 50% off sale or something. And I was literally texting every friend and saying, what, what's your boot size? you know, Flutter is having a sale, blah, 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 blah. Because 
I would have been an asshole to not let my network know this amazing, outstanding, one time a year sale was happening. I want everybody to feel that way about their own programs and services. So it's, it's like, I would be a real jerk if I wasn't telling somebody asking these kinds of questions that I have something available that could help solve that problem, right? So imagine if Peloton was having a sale. Those of you who are in my world know how obsessed I am about Peloton. If Peloton was having a freaking sale, <laughs> I would be like on Facebook Live all day. That's how I want you to feel about your own programs and services. And so for those of you who are like, oh my God, like I feel like I wanna vomit before a consult call. I wanna help you with that and that you've gotta be thinking about the amazing possible results and solutions that you could be delivering to people. And this, this is just to see if this is a fit and you'd be a real asshole. I'm just gonna say it. If you don't communicate to people that you're in business to help solve the problem that they have. Um, so don't be an asshole, share your knowledge. <laughs> That's right. Sandy says, now I'm looking up Peloton to see what it is. Well, if you decide to buy one, I have a discount code. It's only a hundred dollars. It's not 50% off, but um, Betsy says, it's true. I've not given my fry boot sales spiel to some of my own friends about the gifts I have to offer. Betsy, I'm going to say it right now. You need to be like offering consults to every high school sophomore and junior parent about your college services. I mean, you are depriving the people of your wisdom. All right. So, Oh, I got off on a tangent. So paid ads are just one way, right? So you have free things at your disposal, organic things at your disposal. Number one, your mouth. Open it. Tell people, get on the phone with me. Let's see what we can do together. And then coach yourself before you get on this call to be in leadership energy, all right? You are gonna lead this call I'm gonna teach you how here in a minute and you're going to find out if this is a good fit and if you really could offer them help and services. Um, so, so using social media to do that, using email marketing to do that, and if you have the budget, using Facebook ads to drive people. Um, yep, Bonnie says, what about lives on various formats? Absolutely, I actually, am doing so many classes and Facebook Lives inside my private communities that I haven't been doing as many lives as I used to do publicly. I used to do Facebook Live. Those of you who've been around a long time with me know, like I used to be on Facebook. I crank up that Facebook Live all the time. I love blogging, Sandy. So I have a Sunday email that comes out every week that's like my weekly blog, if you will. Um, I am, I'm a big content creator and I love to write and I love to speak and I love, so I deliver my content in a variety of ways. And so I encourage you, if you like to write, um, do it, share it that way. All right. <clears throat> so how to lead a consult call. All right. So you're going to try a variety of ways. Number one, opening your mouth, like direct asking, um, using your social media platforms, whether that's posts, lives, or using paid ads to get people to the application and book an actual call with you. Now, how do you lead a call that's effective? And I mentioned before, getting into that shoe sale energy and coaching yourself about like, I know that when you want clients so badly, um, it's difficult to detach from the outcome, but really this is, you're just on an adventure. This is just an exploratory call. This may not be someone you want to work with, right? So when you come at it from the sense of like, I'm just going to find out what's up with this person and see if I can help. And then I'm going to do my best to articulate what I have to offer. End of story. Um, the first thing you want to do once you get on the call is establish safety. So you want to be like, hey, 
you want to let them know how long, like reiterate, like this is going to be however long it's going to be, 20, 30 minutes. I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm going to talk to you about what I have to offer. Does that sound good to you? Right? So you're establishing safety um, and rapport to proceed. Don't try to establish rapport by being overly chit chatty because you don't have time for that. Right. You want to establish safety, but you want to come at it from a leadership energy. Um, if you spend too much time just shooting the shit with this person, they're going to end up dragging you all over this call. You are the leader. Um, so talk to them about like how much time you have, what's going to happen. Let's go. Um, again, this is not a coaching session. So do not open the door. You want to talk about what they're, the problems they're experiencing, but this is not an opportunity where you're going to coach somebody through their roadblocks or whatever. Like there definitely are coaches who do many 15 to 20 minute coaching sessions as a freebie. That is different than this being a consult call. All right. Um, Okay, I'm not going to get to how to close it yet. So I want to do, actually, I want to do another screen share with a yo. And I want to, hmm. Sorry, have to look at my, I want to walk through this script with you. Can you guys see this? I want to make sure you can see it. Hang on. Yeah, you could. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go back again. Here we go. All right. This is actually the old design. My team is probably cringing. Um, but you guys are all going to get a copy of this. I usually um, save this for my mastermind, but it's okay that you have it. So here are some of the questions that I ask. I'm not going to go through all of them, but it, this basically helps you get into the leadership energy of leading this call. And it's about gathering information and then sharing information. So some of the things that I like to do is ask them like, why did you apply? What's your biggest struggle right now? Um, number three is one of my favorites. What have you tried so far that hasn't worked? This is important for a couple of different reasons because people like to say they've tried everything and they've tried two things. <laughs> so you really do want to find out like, what have you tried so far? Have they been part of other programs? And it, it is really telling. It tells you like, oh, they, they sign up for things, but they don't actually do the work or, you know, they, they haven't tried much. You know, you just want to know. Um, I always like to ask them at the end of working together, what would look and feel like success to you? So what do you hope happens as a result of this experience? Those answers are also very telling because if, if they give you like, well, I really hope that you help me, you know, let's say they're brand new in business. They don't have any foundation set up and they tell you that they want to make $5 million this year. That's a red flag. Like, it's next to impossible for a brand new business to go from zero to 5 million with nothing in place, right? So, um, or they may give you a totally, you know, great answer, but you want to ask that, like, so that you understand what needs to happen for you to deliver on that vision of success. Um, I also like to ask them, what are you willing to try? that you've never tried before. And this kind of question tells me like, is this a person that's gonna be willing to try new things or are they gonna stay stuck in their patterns? Um, I also like to ask, what do you most need? Now I'm a coach, so what do you most need from a coach to get there? And they may say mindset, they may say, I really need strategy or whatever it might be, but it's good to know. Like they may be somebody that really needs a lot of accountability. Um, you may or may not be up for that. It's good to know. And then you can, as you're listening to these questions and leading this discussion, then you can ask additional things. If, you're, if, you, if you think that this is a good fit, um, you can ask them what questions they have. Why did they pick you? I think that's always really good to know. Like, why'd you, 
why'd you want to have this call with me in particular? And so that you can hear like what attracted them to your program. And then I always ask permission, like what questions do you have? And would you like to now hear about on the six? And then they say yes. And you describe not just the features, but the benefits, right? It's much more important than instead of saying like you get 12 calls that you talk about the benefits, the actual results that can happen. Um, talk about the investment level again. And then if you feel like this person is exactly the kind of person that I want to work with and you believe wholeheartedly that you could help this person, then I'm like, hey, I would like to offer you a spot. Are you in? And then silence. Let them, let them speak. Now, we'll talk about objections here in a minute, but I want to see what questions are coming up. Um, is this during the call or would you use this as a pre-questionnaire? So this is during the call, Simone. The pre-application questionnaire I'm going to show you when I get to the sales portion. You'll see it. You'll see parts of it. Um, oh, Valerie says I have a seven question quiz. That's so cool. Um, so we're going to email this out, Nancy. And Nancy, I actually think it's in your on the six portal. Oh, thanks. Yeah, you can join Rich Coach Club and we'll put it in there. That's a good thing to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So as you can see, the consult call questions or, you know, it's really more of like structure and dialogue for your call. If you have this with you, you don't have to ask them exactly as I have them listed or in the order that I have them listed, although I do, do think it takes you uh, through a journey on the call to get the information that you need, like find out what they're struggling with, find out, you know, why are they even talking to you? Um, what do they need most from you to pull off this vision of success that they have? Um, and then talk about what it is that you do, how you do it, the features and benefits of the program, the investment level, and then if, if you feel like this is an amazing person, um, offer them a spot. They can say yes, no, I need to think about it. Um, so Jennifer says, what do you do if they don't answer the questions or send it back? Do you cancel the call? Right. We don't get on the call with people unless they filled out the application. What I just showed you on the screen is not the application. This is what you're asking them on the call. So they must fill out the application and they must acknowledge that they understand how much the investment level is and then they can book their call. If they say, no, I can't afford it or no, I don't want, you know, then they don't get on the call. We send them other resources if they say they can't afford that. Um, Stacy says, how did you handle your first few calls as a new coach? So I did not do these calls as a new coach. I actually never did any console calls until um, about 2015. So that was five years ago. I was already in the business, you know, for eight years when I did my first console calls. And I only started doing them really as an experiment because so many of my clients were struggling with getting console calls booked and how to do them. And so I interviewed like five top console call experts. And that's how I created the, this list of console call questions. Um, and then I did like hundreds of them uh, for, I used to run a program called Clear Coaches. And, um, and also for one-on-one -on -one investments, I started doing consult calls. And um, so the way that I handled them before I did a lot of research was very conversational and it was kind of hit or miss. Um, when I got serious about them with an application and then having these questions ready in advance, um, it was, I mean, my, my close rate was so much higher. My personal close rate is probably between 80 and 90%. Um, that's really high, okay? And I believe it to be high because most people coming to those consult calls with me have already made up their minds. Now that I have Patty doing them, they don't know Patty, right? Um, 
and they, or they may, they may, they may know her a little bit. Oh, Valerie was in Clear Coaches 2016. Oh my God. We finish, um, I may go five minutes over. We're supposed to finish at one o'clock. So um, anyway, <laughs> I'm a little chatty about this topic because I love it so much. So um, the console call questions I think are critical to keep you organized, to keep you in the leadership shoe sale energy. Um, now, if somebody is not a fit, I say, you know, you just cut to the chase and say, I don't think this is the right program for you, or I don't think I'm the right coach for you, but let me send you some referrals. And um, I do think that it's important to not take on people who are not your ideal clients. So Catherine says, I was in Clear Coaches too, but didn't do a consult call, just bought. Um, <laughs> Eleanor says it's like your pep talk that goes over two minutes. It really does. So what was my close rate before I started using the questionnaire? Maybe probably 50, 60%, probably. I also will say that prior to this business, I was in sales. I was in residential real estate, which I am so grateful for that industry because it taught me to have shoe sale energy, right? Like it taught me how to sell myself. And it really is tons of mindset work and dropping the expectation that, right? So you can't base a successful consult call on whether or not the person says yes. You can only base the success of a consult call on you and your efforts and then leave it up to the follow-up and you delivering the best possible information to this person that you have to whether or not they say yes, right? So it's totally different. It's, it's being like palms up and in service versus that kind of energy versus like a palms down, like take energy in your consult call. And I think often entrepreneurs get super tripped up and tell themselves terrible things, um, you know, before they get on a consult call and then they're nervous and get all choked up and like make it mean something about themselves as a business person, whether or not this person says yes. That's, that's actually like, yes, we are doing these calls to get clients and make money, but your value as a business owner is not determined by whether or not the consult call goes well. And if you can shift in that way, you'll book more calls and you'll deliver better calls and you'll have a much higher close rate. So what I think, I believe that my close rate, close rate on consult calls is very high because of that and because of the energy because i'm just like i'm not on that call to pressure them like when we get to the end of this webinar and i start talking about on the six i hope if you're a good fit you apply and join us because it's in my opinion the best possible business mastermind that exists um but like if it's not a fit for you i hope you just enjoyed this free information um yes palms up yes Elena's in the mastermind. Elena, is it Elena or Elena? I keep calling it both ways and I need to know how to properly pronounce your name, especially because we about to have a bunch of time together. All right, so let's talk about, all right. So how to close the consult call and objections. So closing the consult call is what I already covered, which is basically like, offering them a spot, asking them if they have any questions. If they say things, um, Elena, Elena, or Elena, okay, Elena, okay, okay. Um, so, um, so objections, here's what I have to say about objections. So, so this is probably the only part of the call where some coaching may take place, should you choose to coach them on their objections. So they may say like, I don't have the money, the common objections, I don't have the time, I don't have the money, um, I don't know if it's the right time, or I have blank, like fill in the blank, some major life happening, you know, that may get in the way, like a kid issue, a parent issue, but there's lots of things that people can use. And so I personally do not do a fancy dance to convince people and overcome their objections. 
my personal opinion, like I will work a little bit. I will, I will talk to them about like, um, are you sure, you know, are you sure that moving, um, is the reason why you don't want to join right now? Or is it a fancy excuse? <laughs> right? Like the human brain is interesting. We'll come up with all kinds of reasons why now is not the right time. And I'm definitely a woman that's like, I want to be the woman with the stories and not the regrets in my life. So are you sure that it's really not the right time or are you just putting off doing the work? You know, I might say something like that. If they say they don't have the money, um, Usually when somebody says, I mean, we could do a whole training on that one. I don't have the money. Um, usually what that means is you haven't convinced me that I want to invest the money that I have in this. And so to me, that's an invitation to say like, um, you know, what is it about how I described what's happening with the program that you don't believe this is going to help you make money or this is going to, right? There are people who, right, they... Let me back up and say with our consult calls, they have already had to acknowledge they understand the investment. And so then if they get on the call and they have a money related objection, we talk about the payment plans that we have that are very generous. We just upped to like, we now have a 12 pay for most of my stuff. So, you know, usually I don't have the money doesn't mean that they don't have the money if they've gotten on a consult call. It, so it's like, there could be an over overcoming that kind of objection. But if legit, like I had, um, I had somebody come up to me at the end of an event and say, I'm literally overdrawn in my checking account. Therefore, I'm not just bullshitting that I don't have the money. I really don't have the money. But later when she did, because I was so respectful and not an asshole, you know, and hard selling her, she came back and she spent money with me multiple times since that time. Right. So I, when I say I don't do a fancy tap dance, I mean, like, you really want to treat people the way you want to be treated. And so if you intuitively get that there's an objection happening that could be overcome with some mindset work, then by all means, attempt to do that. Um, if you, if they say, like, um, like, I don't know if I have the time, I don't have, you know, you can go in on that. But the point I'm making here is what I have noticed though, is people that I've worked really, really hard to overcome their objections end up being the biggest pain in the ass in my program. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. So you want to think about your ideal clients here. And if you have to work that hard to get them to a yes, you don't want them because they are going to be the ones to complain about bullshit like typos. And I'm not talking about the people that are like, hey, I just thought you should know I saw your thing and there's a typo if you want to fix it. I'm talking about the people that make a big freaking deal about nothing. So you just want to think about that. From years of experience, years of experience, um, that's what I have to say about that. So uh, I'm going to go back to that. All right. So we have spent the past hour talking about getting consult calls booked, like why bother with consult calls? What are they for? Getting them booked, how to lead the call. Um, I hope that you, I would love to see in the chat, what was your biggest takeaway so far from today's conversation? And I want to talk about, this is the sales portion of the training. I want to talk about the On the Six Mastermind, where this is our, the kinds of conversations we have on the regular. We have recently changed the mastermind to be a 12-month mastermind instead of a six-month mastermind. And so um, I want to first show you some of the results from some of our mastermind clients. Um, so... My lovely Jessica is here on the broadcast. So Jessica, if you're still here, I would love to hear in the chat what you have to say about this. But I think this number has gone up. Um, but Jessica says, this on the six voodoo works. She generated $53,000 in the first five months of the program. And she calls it the best decision she ever made. I love her so much. This is my friend Jackie Gartman, who is a coaching veteran. 
um, she has always worked pretty much part time in the coaching industry. And she's like, oh my gosh, this is the busiest I have ever been. Um, and oh, what a breath of fresh air Kimberly is. Kimberly, who is an On The Six client, she had her very first launch the first month of On The Six and made 20K, which um, for a new entrepreneur is pretty exceptional. And this is the beautiful Caitlin. So Caitlin specializes in, she's like me, she cannot stand hustle culture. She's really out to disrupt how we work and introduce more play into our lives. And so she talked about selling out her group program, which is pretty exceptional. This is Emily Muirnan. So Emily, we have actually had on trainings before. Um, she teaches people how to run events, but when COVID hit, she completely pivoted her business to be teaching people how to run virtual events. And, she, you know, she's a great success story, a great COVID success story where she thought the sky was falling and she's actually had her most profitable month in business ever, which is very exciting to me. And Stacy Bruce. So Stacy's one of my bear coaches, but she's also an on the six client. And she talked about how the mastermind has really helped her step into her identity as a coach and own what's possible for her. And um, I actually just interviewed this beautiful woman, Allison, for my podcast. It'll come out in maybe like two, three weeks. She is an HR specialist. And she talked about, um, she's worked in corporate for a long, long time. And she actually specializes in helping small businesses run their teams. And she talked about how wonderful the accountability has been and the coaching from all of us. And during the past three months, she got her system set up, her content. She grew her email list from zero to 60. So she's got goals and not excuses now. This is Dr. Alessandra Duke, who if any of you are in the summer of yes, you've met Dr. Alessandra Duke, but she, um, she took her group, her local community event to be a national event offering. She is, all of these women are amazing. I tend to have amazing women like all of you in my programs. So let's talk about what's included. So, um, we basically have quarterly private one-on-one -on -one sessions. So you have a one-on-one 90-minute -on -one strategy and planning call right at the beginning with this lovely badass, Anamika, who I've mentioned a few times. She's my COO and strategist. And then you also get four 30-minute private calls with my head business and accountability coach, Patty Rantapa. I actually just got off of a coaching session with one of my mastermind clients, Mary, who was like, oh my God, Patty is incredible. I'm like, I know. So there's one-on-one -on -one support. There's also an amazing uplifting community. So if any of you from On The Six are on this, please back me up and talk about how supportive this community is. You also get monthly money generating assignments and challenges. So, um, you get one-on-one -on -one support. You, of course, have the community of all your peers, and you also get some really specific challenges and assignments from me to help you track your progress and make more money. Um, <laughs> you, also, you also get 24 live classes with me. So two classes a month on Zoom, like this, but you can see everybody in the class. And I... Um, design curriculums that help you create goals, clear your blocks, get moving. You also get 24 live marketing call sessions with Anamika. So you can bring your questions. When we put your plan together and you're implementing your plan, you can bring your questions on sales funnels and marketing materials. And um, we also will give you expert reviews and professional support on those things. And then these are the marketing reviews I was talking about. So twice a month, you can submit your stuff um, for us to give you feedback on. And there's weekly tech and marketing automation Q&A. So we have a whole team of people ready 
to help you with whatever's going on in your business. We also decided to include in this 12 month experience, we're putting on my annual event, Finish Strong. It's a two day, an two day annual event. It's virtual this year because of COVID, but we're gonna spend both of those days like teaching you top experts, everything from business planning, podcasting, sales, mindset, motivation, and more. And also some of you may be in demand clients already. This is my newest digital program that we're so proud of. Anamika and I created this and it's basically, it's our completely updated marketing training program. It has everything you need to know about how to create offers, implement a successful communication plan, set up sales systems that convert buyer or browsers into buyers. So our mastermind peeps get that for free. We also, this is new, um, we have hired a top diversity and inclusion specialist to help us with training and resources for all of our groups um, so that you can create an anti-racist business. So I've had a ton of questions about you know anti-racist and anti-oppressive like just the client i was talking to she was like i want to hire somebody what do i include in the job posting so that people know that diversity and inclusion is important to me we have all of that available for our clients um you also get if you have seen in my world um, I like to send boxes of goodies. And so um, Bianca, uh, my right-hand assistant, is actually working her tail off this week to get boxes ready for all of our new clients. And so we have a beautiful package we would love to deliver to your door as a welcome package. Um, the other thing that's included, this is like, you know, an infomercial and, and like, you get steak knives. Um, Alexander Franzen, who is one of the top copywriters in the world, is the head copywriter for my agency. She is um, delivering a two-day event that's basically about, tr it's training you how to write emails that sell. Um, Actually, it's three interactive live co-working days with her. So she's going to use examples of emails from my business and from other people's businesses that have been the highest earning emails she's written. And she's going to teach you the formula for that. Um, so she's also going to give you 50 fill in the blank email templates. These aren't cheesy templates. These are templates that are proven to generate money. Um, so this is just a visual of some of the resources that you get. And um, what we would love to invite you to do is have a console call. And so you can apply to be part of On The Six by visiting, I know Mallory's gonna be popping it in the chat. You can visit this URL and hit the apply now button. And then once you hit the apply now button, a questionnaire pops up and you can click start and answer questions. And it basically, the questions are basically like, how long have you been in business? What's worked? Uh, what are you looking for? Why are you interested? That sort of thing. Um, and then one, once you send in your application, yay, Patty will be in touch to book your free console call where she will then ask you a lot of the questions that I articulated. Actually, I don't think Patty uses my consult call script. Um, let's talk about the investment. So the investment for 12 months is 9997. Um, like I mentioned before, we have payment plans. So you can pick a one pay, I think we have a three pay, a six pay, a nine pay, and a 12 pay. We're trying to be really flexible in the time of COVID. Um, and so you can, pick a payment plan and away we go. So I'm gonna see what questions, I know I'm going over. Oh, Jen says, done. I had my call and I can't wait to get started. I'm so excited about you. Mm. Okay, Mallory, let's hear what questions have rolled in. I know you got some questions before the call. 
Yeah, so um, one came from Kelly Jackson, and I thought it was a really good one. Uh, she really wants to know when they've loved like all of your free content, how do you get someone off the fence and then onto the phone? Can you say that again? Sorry. No, you're good. Um, when they've loved like all your free content and they can't get enough of it, how do you get them um, to go from free content to on the phone with you? You ask. <clears throat> so some of you may be in the same boat where you're constantly producing amazing content and um, like light up the chat. How many of you waited a while in consuming my free content to pay me for something? And some of you may have been around for a while. This may be like your 500th free training with me and you haven't purchased yet. Tell me why. Um, Betsy Pruitt says, me, Betsy's my friend and neighbor. It took me several years, Tanya says, to be honest. Um, yeah, so, so I will first say, Kelly, sometimes like I like to describe it this way if you think of like a sidewalk and a, a highway there will be some people that like just enter your world and they're on the sidewalk for a while just watching the cars go by and then they'll move into the slow lane right and then they'll move like and then there are people that get off the exit right into the fast lane they book that consult call they're like i never heard of her she's fucking awesome i'm in Right. And there are other people that it takes them a while. And there will be some people that just stay on the sidewalk forever. Right. Somebody's still on the sidewalk. Um, and so it, there's just sometimes a warming up period that's longer for some people than others. And that's OK. Um, but if you notice that somebody you feel like these people need to like jump off the fence and get into this, I reach out to people directly a lot. Um, I'll send them a bomb bomb video. If you guys don't know about bomb bomb, I freaking love it. It's a, it's a video email integration, um, program. And I'll send people a video and be like, dude, like you are a professional webinar taker. <laughs> Come on, let's get you making some money. Um, so it just depends. Oh, hi, Sang. Sang is registered for On the Six. Miss Chun Lee. So, yeah, why are you clicking on my emails and not signing up? That's right. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to say um, another question that we had was someone, it was actually Donna Carmen, who said she's posted on Facebook and she's tapped out all of her friends and family. Mm -hmm. And so she's trying to explore how to get additional clients um, mm -hmm. without spending heavy on marketing is her big thing. So she was asking for advice there. So there's some, lots of organic things that you can do. So when you think about organic marketing versus paid, one takes your time and one takes your money. Right. And so um, I am a huge fan of a combination. So um, Donna, what I would say, <clears throat> what I would encourage you to do is do free trainings, get in front of people. Like when it's not in the time of COVID, I'm a huge fan of getting out in your local community and speaking for local groups that used to always lead to paid clients for me. Right now, we're not gathering in groups, right? Unless it's online. So pitch yourself to be a podcast guest. Pitch yourself to be a guest blogger. Pitch yourself, um, you know, or, or host something like this with a topic that you know about. Um, it's just going to take more of your time and that's okay. You also, it's like, so it's, it's, Everyone really and truly should always be um, growing their audience. And so when you think about list building and you're like, eh, listen, your list is your real estate. Your list is what you own. Facebook and Instagram could change the algorithms and change shit up us on us anytime. And it's good to have a list of people, their names and email addresses, you can communicate with them on your own terms. So that's what I have to say about that. So Paige, go check out our application. If you click on that link, you can look at the questions that we ask in our 
pre-console application. There you go, yeah. What other questions? There are 77 people still here after I've gone over 20 minutes. I love y'all. I know y'all got questions. Get off the sidewalk, get into the fast lane. Betsy says, how do I fight waiting until I feel perfect or until my website is perfect? Betsy, I am going to run around the block and pop you, <laughs> okay? That's how you're gonna get over it. No, for real, like people don't want perfect. If people wanted perfect, I would not have a business, okay? So let's all be clear and honest. So pe what people want is to understand what you have to offer. All people need to know, Betsy, is that you can help their kid get into college. That's it. Do you need a way to communicate that? Yes. Do you have to have a perfect website? No. Betsy, you could have a full client roster by just getting on the phone for the next week. Mm-hmm. I said what I said. You know I'm right. I know, Betsy, come on. So all these people are like, I feel you, Betsy. Listen to me, listen to me. Your clients, your people do not want perfect. They could give a shit about perfect. If they care about perfect, they're not your ideal client. What's the best app for list building? So, List building, do you mean what's the best way to host your list or what's the best way to grow your list? We use Entreport, but I don't think, it depends on where you are in your business. I think um, there's also ActiveCampaign and ConvertKit. Anna gets twitchy about MailChimp. Oh, how to how to build your list. So that's it. I think we have a, a number of different trainings on this, and this is definitely something that we teach in On the Six. But um, list building, you need to have a free thing that gets people to give you their name and email address. Like this, this webinar training is a list builder. So you had to sign up, right? Um, so that's like, a million different things you could do pdf downloads you could do live trainings you could do i mean there's so many things you could do so i can't really do that question justice right now uh, okay let's see i'm sure susan will answer this but you can be anywhere yeah you can you can so on the six the real parameters for on the six is that you can be a brand new you know somebody starting a business um up to earning 100K. And once you've earned 100K, then you would graduate into the higher level mastermind, which is for people you know, going from 100K to a million. And so um, we've, we've really restructured things in on the sixth to where once you hit 100K, you can then graduate, starting in January, you can graduate to the higher level mastermind. Um, Sharon says, I recently switched from MailChimp to MailerWrite. Um, so we actually have what we're calling like a quick start onboarding um, starting in just a couple of weeks. So um, in a couple of weeks. You're welcome, Lindsay. So Jackie says, I'm feeling held back by not being certified yet, but I also feel 100% that coaching is my perfect career. Should I wait to be bear certified or would on the six be good for a newbie and anti coach entrepreneur? So um, I know that different, if, so different coaches feel differently about this. Um, Jackie, let me know what you're coaching on. And no, you do not have to be certified to build your business. So, um, Jackie, I think you should have a call with Patty and she can help you sort that out. Don't be shy about that. We, you know we would love to work with you. We would love to work with you. 
Betsy Pruitt, why didn't you answer me back? She like, she probably like, she's like, Susan coming around the corner to pop me. I got to get off this webinar to protect myself. She's getting violent. You're here. You're just stunned into silence. Hi, Jennifer. Jennifer's working towards her bear certification. And I just had one of my free people ask me how she can pay me. What? You can do it. That's right. Jennifer, would you tell her? Click on this PayPal link now. Oh my God. Betsy says, what was your question? My question is, what's your reaction to me saying, you just need to get on the phone? Betsy's a new grandma too, a new Nana. All right. Good. Call those sophomores and juniors. Call them. <clears throat> Tell them you have a special program about applying to colleges in the time of COVID because everybody's freaked out about that. All right, any, any last questions? There's so many of you that are still here and I'm so excited about it. Kathy says, thank, thank you, Kathy. I so appreciate, I really, really, really do. I know everyone's time is valuable and I really appreciate you taking the time out of the middle of your day, depending on your time zone, to come talk about these things. The fact that you showed up to learn more about console calls shows that, you know, you're really serious about your business. And I want to work with entrepreneurs who want to make money. I'm good at it. I can help you make money. And if there's um, stuff, foundational stuff that needs to be built, there is no better place to do it. You get me, Mallory, Anna, Patty, the whole agency team, We'll be doing trainings on Facebook ads and branding and content creation and all those things. So, hi, Victoria. Great. Great, great, great. <sighs> Kathy's an in demand. Yay! I love that digital program. All right, you guys. Well, I'm going to wrap it up for today. You're so welcome, Suzanne. Um, if you're watching the replay, Click on that link, get your application in, chat with Patty. I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day. I'm gonna go eat some chicken chop salad and sit on my patio possibility until my next coaching call. So bye everybody, have a great day.